here's a thought as as Voss is transitioning in his thinking from the uh, uh, approaching text with a with a vital dogmatic interest to being more programmatically sensitive to the unfolding of redemptive history. Not that he's ever one without the other. I, I, I'm wondering if he's not if this isn't a an example of the development in Voss's thinking of the centrality of the divine self communication pre and post lapsarian and the mystery here is that this god doesn't remember when we talk about the new relation of creation and its perfection in redemption the relation changes the creatures in the relation change god does not change so you can't sneak in covenantal properties or immutable god or anything like that into into voss uh, so, so you've got this um, this this strong doctrine of immutability and impassibility, and it is the same God without qualification to whom we relate before and after the fall. Yet, after the fall, there is uh, there are at least these two things going. There is a, uh, Voss even says on pages five and six, it's as though religion is reversed after the fall. This is the, that might be what he's after. How is religion reversed? Well, God starts pouring himself out in the service of the creature the way the creature is supposed to pour himself out to God in worship before the fall. And so Voss says, I think what he's wrestling with in this sermon is that when you think about that great reversal of religion after the fall, and this God remains self-contained and immutable in his condescension, yet what is he doing? He's acting like a servant who is giving himself all of his resources he's poured out on behalf of the church. Well, what, what does that scream for? It screams for just what Danny is talking about. It screams for the suffering servant, the one who, without ceasing to be the fullness of God, gives himself, empties himself, takes the form of a servant, becomes obedient to death on a cross. And in that way, religion, the, the principle of religion seems to be fundamentally reversed where? Most pointedly in the crucifixion. And then uh, the, the, the giving of that life reaches its full fruition when that life is taken back up. And the one who gave himself in the great reversal of religion um, ascends receives the spirit, ascends, pours that spirit out so that the true religion before the fall, where we give ourselves fully and entirely to God and worship, so that it might be realized. And yeah, it's... Um, do, you it's think, like, do you think that uh, uh, in that regard, uh, where he talks in almost uh, Fantillion terms, proto-Fantillion terms about man's religious nature after the fall, because man cannot, he's going to be religious, but because of sin, he's going to seek after that which is not God himself, that this is the marvel of the covenant that God graciously seeks after man in this, in this fashion. Yes, yes. And, and in seeking man in this fashion, what is he laying bare for man to learn? I am your fruition. Uh, in me, your fruit is found. And, and the, the problem with Adam before the fall, the problem with Israel after the fall at the base of Mount Sinai, when the covenant has to be renewed, is what? They're seeking from the creature the satisfaction and delight that only God himself can give. And, and so Voss, uh, especially on page seven, says that the wonder of this relation is that God shows no reserve in giving himself to man for his fruition and his blessedness. And, and so uh, the, isn't it the ultimate critique of idols? Voss speaks later about the Asherah pole. What is it a symbol of? It's a dead stump of wood protruding from the ground where there is no life and there can be no fruition. Um, what a symbol for the idol. It's, it's, uh, it's barren and death-like, 
But in contrast to that, God himself is this evergreen, and then shifting the metaphor here, the transformation, uh, fruit-bearing tree who is himself life uh, in himself and for his people 